Are you all ready for our trip to Poland? I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, 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 stop. Stop. You, you bet. bet. Please let this be a normal field trip. <laughs> After Poland regained its independence following the First World War, it immediately found itself in a very difficult situation. Czechoslovakia thought that their border was dumb, Germany was just salty and poor for the time being, and the Soviet Union was busy not eating. Luckily, Poland finagled themselves a deal with the French and British, which became especially necessary after some raving Austrian lunatics started getting popular. Now, France and Britain actually weren't too worried about this guy, they were just like, well, you know. Politics sometimes just brings out the Stop worst that. in people, but in the end, it's sometimes better just cut that out, man. It's, it's, it's not funny anymore. Sleep peacefully, knowing that put that down. Austrian man isn't real and can't hurt you. I'm gonna invade Poland, guys. I'm sorry, you're what now? Poland had actually anticipated a German invasion for quite a while, so most of the Polish Navy was sent to Britain before the war, and the Air Force was relocated to secret airstrips in the woods. However, Germany was also being a busy little bee, and used all this downtime to make some allies of their own. So, you won't attack us if we don't attack you, right? Absolutely. Why are you saying everything in air quotes? It kind of makes everything you say sound disingenuous and just, just sort of makes me wonder. Oh, gotta go. Hey, we're still on for invading Poland together, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess. All right, rad. See you later, skaters. Kind of a weird guy. I think we'll be fine. <laughs> When Germany meandered across the Polish border on the morning of September 1st, 1939, Poland had only been able to mobilize half of its army, of which only around 50% were in their combat positions. This was due to British and French pressure to delay mobilization so that they could talk some sense into Hitler. By September 10th, the Polish army had lost most of their original defensive positions to the Germans, and by the 14th, Warsaw was completely boned. However, contrary to popular belief, Poland wasn't just like, well, you know, life goes on, I guess. Oh my gosh, wow, that's so ironic. They staged several counter-offensives and mounted a heroic defense. In fact, the Polish plan was never to beat Germany, but simply to stall them for two weeks before France invaded the almost totally undefended western border of Germany. Hey, hey, dude, are you gonna launch that attack anytime soon? Things are pretty rough over here. Yeah, I... I, I don't know. The border seems really well defended over here. Yeah, I'd better not. To add insult to injury, Romania retracted its military alliance with Poland under German pressure, and the Soviet Union invaded eastern Poland on September 17th, which, according to recent research, they wouldn't have done if France had attacked Germany. <laughs> Once the Soviets invaded from the east, Poland pretty much knew they were screwed, so they dipped to Romania with the nation's gold reserves and the remnants of the Polish army and escaped to France. By May of 1940, the Polish army in France numbered 84,500 men. However, relations between the two countries were strained, as many Poles saw the French army as unorganized and ill-disciplined. Adding to this tension, the Polish army in France was given second-rate equipment, ramshackle housing, and was repeatedly dismissed from giving the French advice on how to combat the Germans. The first Polish unit to see combat from this army was the Polish Independent Highland Brigade, which was deployed to Norway and participated alongside the Polish Navy in the attack on Narvik. The rest of the army just hung out in France, but soon found themselves fighting once more as the Germans swung around the Maginot Line in May of 1940. Most Polish divisions served as rearguards and allowed larger French forces to retreat. The Poles fought bravely till the end. Which wasn't very long because France surrendered. Uh, Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah. It's been a long time on that one. Polish troops evacuated to Britain any way they could, but only a fraction of the men found their way to the island after the fall of France. However, what remained of the Polish army was joined by thousands of other Poles who had escaped the fiasco of 1939, forming the Polish First Corps. Additionally, 8,400 pilots and ground crew of the Polish Air Force found themselves in the UK after the Battle of France, and would soon make invaluable contributions to the upcoming Battle of Britain. 
As soon as France fell, Germany set their sights on the British Isles as the logical next location for them to peacefully occupy. In order to pave the way for the invasion of Britain, Germany started dropping some bombs here and there in their spare time. To counter this, the Royal Air Force could only muster a few hundred pilots, so they were quite pleased to receive the veteran Polish flyers. These Polish pilots would soon distinguish themselves, and by the end of the battle had downed over 200 German planes with a 10 to 1 kill to death ratio. Another fun fact is that when the RAF held a gunnery competition for its fighter pilots, Polish airmen passed with flying colors and placed first, second, and third. Flashing back to when Poland fell in 1939, a couple thousand Poles had actually found themselves withdrawn to Syria, which at the time was a French colony, and began forming the Polish Independent Carpathian Rifle Brigade, proving that since their own language isn't hard enough, they have to make all their English translations equally as tedious. But don't worry, they have a nice Polish acronym, SPKSK. When the French surrendered to the Germans in 1940, the colonial officials in Syria ordered SPKSK to turn themselves in, but they just gave the French the middle finger and took all their stuff to Palestine. Another oddly peaceful place. From there, these certified bad boys were deployed to Libya in 1941 and fought in the Battle of Tobruk, among many other engagements. <laughs> Come to us boldly, to your brothers, to the Red Army. Here, you will be cared for. Here, you will be respected. Comrade, these guys just surrendered. Oh. <clears throat> Welcome, new comrades. Uh, right this way. We're gonna shoot them, right? Without a doubt. Actually, Gulag? Yeah, that'd probably be best. However, when Germany invaded the Soviet Union in 1941, Stalin allowed for the creation of another Polish army in modern-day Uzbekistan under the command of Władysław Anders. So, with just the food in their bellies and the Adidas tracksuits on their back, thousands of hopeful Slavs started their trek south. So many Poles were released, however, that they caused a labor shortage in the Gulags and the Soviets started nabbing them again. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. However, many made it, and by 1942, Anders' army numbered 75,000 soldiers and 40,000 civilians. Interestingly, though, there was an unexplained shortage of officers. I wonder what could have happened to them. Hmm. Anywho, the Soviet Union was kind of a wacky host, so Anders decided to move his 115,000 person entourage to British controlled Iran, and from there linked up with Spsk in Palestine. Together, they formed the Polish Second Corps. As this was happening, a lad named Zygmunt Berlin, who I will note had been convicted of embezzling funds and kicked out of the Polish army, decided that the Soviets weren't that bad and started raising another army of POWs as soon as Anders' army left. This force, known as Berlin's army, would number over 200,000 men by the end of the war and suffered mad casualties in their push west. <laughs> The newly formed Second Corps would take part in the Allied invasion of Italy in 1943, and it was actually Polish soldiers who captured Monte Cassino in 1944 with great loss of life. Interestingly, the Second Corps replaced these losses with captured German soldiers, thousands of which were conscripted Poles. By the time Anders' forces had reached northern Italy, though, attention shifted to Normandy, where the Allies had landed in 1944, much to the surprise of the Germans. Oh boy, I did not see that coming. <laughs> No Polish ground forces were present at D-Day, although several Polish ships and many Polish aircraft supported the landing. But in July, the Polish 1st Armored Division from the 1st Corps was landed in France and began playing an important role in operations such as the Filet Pocket and the liberation of the Netherlands. Speaking of which... <laughs> Back in 1941, Colonel Stanisław Sosobowski of the Polish 1st Corps began forming an independent Polish parachute brigade with the purpose of eventually jumping into Poland to liberate the country. However, as Germany began to collapse and the Red Army moved into Poland, it became clear that the Poles probably wouldn't have the chance to liberate their country. Hence, 
they volunteered to participate in Operation Market Garden. Now, as we all know, the operation went swimmingly and there were absolutely no miscalculations or failures of any kind, so you would be surprised to learn that the Polish Brigade suffered heavy casualties and was ultimately scapegoated by Montgomery as the reason for the operation's failure. I actually visited the town that the Poles dropped into and it's really cool, the locals built a monument and stuff, it's dope. Anyway... I feel like I'm forgetting something. And I'm back. So I just wanted to let you know that there's some other World War II videos that also came out today on the Armchair Historian, House of History, and Voices of the Past. So I'd recommend you go check those out. They're all dope channels. Solid 87.3 out of 10. Links will be up right now.